everyone, I'm Pam Gregory, astrologer. I'm going to be speaking to you today about the first half of August and the full supermoon that we have coming up right at the beginning of the month on the 1st. And this is in Aquarius. Now, August is an unusual month because we've actually got three lunations in it. We have a full supermoon right at the beginning of the month, which I'm going to be talking about here, right at the end of the month, and a new moon in the middle. And this that I'm going to be talking about today principally is um, the second in a row of four full supermoons in a row. And what a supermoon is, is when the moon is much closer in its orbit to the Earth. Um, that means that there's a greater gravitational pull on the tides and the tectonic plates. Therefore, seismic activity is more likely at this time. But any full moon will... Um, bring more emotion, bring more feeling to the fore, but particularly when it's a supermoon because of that very strong force of the moon. So this is what I'm going to be talking about today. And one of the things I'm going to be sharing with you is something I'm going to be really talking about the whole year, virtually until November anyway, which is this long running square between Pluto and the nodal axis. And just understand with everything else that's happening with the context of the light and the solar activity that this we are really in a very unique evolutionary opportunity here so as i've spoken about in the last couple of videos this is um really squeezing us into our evolutionary choices of do we focus on fear or do we focus on love we can't do both at the same time it's one or the other they're polar opposites or are we living in victim mode or are we living in co-creator you know are we stepping into our power into our center and i know people listen to these videos and then what they tend to do is often go back and just go through the same old, old old habits so i'd really encourage you to really become very cognizant very conscious of all those little not just decisions but reactions reactions in a day because it was the great uh, Carl Jung who said it isn't what happens to in life uh, to us in life it's how we react to what happens that determines character and ultimately destiny because two people can live through the same experience one can go into victim and the other can go into co-creator you know yep I accept that's happened I'll take that information and that experience but I am going to ride above it because I'm more powerful than that in um, how I run my life. I'm not going to let external events in general run my life. So really think about this, not only in your decisions, but also in your reactions to things, because it's very easy in a world full of really big, scary things that you can go <gasps> and go into victim um, very quickly, barely without thinking about it. It's a sort of instinctive reaction and catch yourself, really try and catch yourself when that happens, because we are feeding a very different timeline than if we say, yep, I hear all that, but that is not my chosen timeline. That's not my chosen reality. Yep, it's happening on one reality, but it's not going to be my reality. And remember that the future is invisible. There may be proposals and plans but they haven't manifested yet. And we as humanity can change them. And even as individuals, we can change our own individual reality. We truly can. And this is really what this whole evolutionary period is about. So that's what that big T-square of Pluto to the nodal axis is about. So, But lots of other things to share with you about this. So let me share, let me share my screen now. So this is 1st of August, and I've set it for English time because this is where I live. But um, if you, unless you live in English time, ignore the clock face, ignore the houses, just look at the where the planets are sitting and their aspects to each other. So here we have Pluto, 28 of Capricorn, square to South Node, 28 of Libra, and the North Node 28 of Aries. So it's exact by degree. And indeed, it was exact to the, the minute on the 22nd of July, the 25th of July, 28th of July. 
So this is the, you know, the tightest point in July going into early August that this RT square will be at all year, but nevertheless, it continues until November. So here we have the full supermoon. We have the moon at 9.15, 9 degrees, 15 minutes of Aquarius. A full moon is always where the sun and moon are opposite each other. So the sun is at 9 degrees, 15 minutes of Leo. Now, Aquarius, we're going to have a lot of Aquarius energy going forwards because Pluto, as you may know, is going to spend nine months in Aquarius next year. And then at the end of next year, it moves fully into Aquarius for 20 years, 20 years. So Aquarius energy is about community. It's about collaboration. It's about growth from the grassroots up, not top down. Think of it like tree roots connecting or mycelium you know, mushroom, fungi, how they connect. And often these, these groups are, are, are growing and, and connecting very quietly behind the scenes, but they are building a very strong network of information, connection, and really are resonating on the same frequency. This, this is a growing family of frequency globally. So some very interesting energy with Aquarius, but it is very much linked to higher mind, to intellect, teddy energy. It's linked to brilliant innovation, technological, scientific, medical innovation. So all of that we're going to see absolutely moving at a very rapid pace over the next 20, 21 years. Very, they're going to be incredible technologies. Many of them are healing technologies, beneficial technologies, but equally the shadow side of Aquarius, the less good side, is about um, AI and robotics. It's also because it's connected with the mind. It's to do with um, mental illness. It's to do with extreme emotional detachment or mental dissociation, where you just feel you know, completely emotionally cut off from, from other people. And that kind of feeds into the the mental illness too. So I think we, we are sadly going to see a lot of that. And every sign, every planet has its has its shadow sign, but it's very much linked to the mind and, and the intellect. Whereas the sun, on the other hand, in Leo, Leo, as I've spoken, is linked to heart energy. It's linked to a, a real love of life, a joy in life, a, an enthusiasm of, of vibrancy, a a creative vitality of letting your light shine, helping others to let their, their light shine. So it's very much heart-based. So one of the um, polarities here, if you like, um, in any full moon here, it's to do with head and heart, head and heart. And I came across, again, I was reminded of the, the wonderful work of um, the theoretical uh, physicist, Dr. Amit Goswami, and I'll put the link for his website below, because he talks quite a lot about um, head versus heart. And he says that he calls himself, by the way, a spiritual renegade, which I rather like, actually, because um, renegades tend to be very often people who are independent minded. He also calls himself a quantum activist. And I like that phrase, too. And that's very much defining his work as a quantum activist. And what he said recently was, was absolutely fascinating because he said the head, the mind, operates in space and time. But the heart, he said, when we drop into the heart, that is what connects us to source, to oneness, to the divine and to the quantum realm. It operates outside of space and time once we drop into the heart. Now, isn't that interesting? I found that absolutely fascinating. And indeed, he says that he defines quantum activism. One of the things he defines it as is because it values love as the most powerful transforming force in the universe, because love is a very high frequency. And of course, uh, Leo linked to the heart. We have Venus here too, love, planet of love in Leo, the heart. And so 
you know, I was quoting in, in the last couple of videos, I was talking about uh, another brilliant physicist, Nassim Harriman, talking a great deal about the heart. And, you know, for me, we need to stay anchored in the heart to stay connected to our humanity, to, to protect us from this drift into AI and all these whizzy new apps and for convenience we can buy our shopping faster and you know, all of those things I've talked about. We must be acutely aware of, you know, thinking long term like a chess player of where those are leading. We need to stay anchored in the heart. And I found it fascinating that two extraordinary brilliant men like Dr. Goswami and Nassim Harriman, who have both come very much from the intellect, from the mind, are both talking now about the importance of the heart and the importance of love. So check out Dr. Um, Goswami's work because um, Goswami's work because I, I found that so interesting, particularly relating to this full supermoon of you know, head versus heart. Now, another lovely aspect um, here is Characlo, our old friend, who I haven't talked about for quite a long time, is at 11 degrees of Aquarius. It's conjunct this full supermoon. Characlo, you might remember, was the wife of Chiron in myth. She has beautiful energy of being able to hold sacred space in silence, being able to heal people by her state of being. I feel her archetype is very related to the, the Buddhist ground of being, that permanent stillness that we can always access in ourselves. She's known as the soul midwife who was very present at times of transition of life to death, but also times of transition of consciousness, which of course is what we're all going through right now. So in the conjunction to the, the moon, and Aquarius is quite an objective sign, whereas Leo tends to be much more subjective, Characlo in conjunction to the moon will help us reach this state, I believe, of what I've called divine neutrality, or uh, one of my viewers has referred to as benevolent neutrality. This being able to hold our, our state of being in a beautiful place, stillness, sacredness, without judgment, without polarity, without separation, without division. Characlo will help us at this full moon, full supermoon to do that. I just want to go back um, to talking about this T-square between Pluto and the nodes. Now, I might have mentioned uh, in previous videos that the North Node is now conjunct the dwarf planet Eris. It will remain conjunct Eris for the rest of this year into early 2024. It becomes exact in October, November. Eris, you might remember, is the warrior sister of Mars. She's known as the goddess of discord and chaos. Um, she's the feisty street fighter. She is the one who stands for um, truth, justice, equality, every voice needing to be heard. And she is utterly uncompromising in those battles. She will not stop her fight until truth, justice and equality come to the fore in society. So she's a remarkable um female energy, but my goodness, a powerful one. And she is going to be very present in the collective. Now, that suggests to me that we are going to see much more social unrest, generally, as truth comes out. I mean, look at France right now. It's extraordinary. Um, Netherlands also has gone through much of this and continues to do so. Germany, I understand. You know, this is in, in pockets all over the world of people um, standing in their power. And uh, that, I expect, is going to continue. And if anything, build. Remember, September, October is eclipse time too, so that's always more intense. So be aware of that. So this is the kind of demolition and demanding side of this seesaw, of this of this T-square. But equally, we have beautiful Homer, the dwarf planet linked to fertility, creativity, regeneration, being able to birth babies from all over her body. In her fire goddess expression, she birthed the islands of Hawaii, um, 
she is extraordinary at being able to summon wild food from from the, the land, even if it's laid waste with her magic stick. She is a very powerful symbol for New Earth, of growing wild food, of rapid regeneration to something very beautiful and very different. And remember, these processes are going on simultaneously. It's not that we have to wait for the, the demolition of the old. I mean, it's crumbling anyway. At the same time, already, the birth of the new is happening. And it will become more and more apparent as we move through the coming years. Um, we are going to have some very powerful next few years. I mean, absolutely no doubt, because the astrology is extraordinary. Um, the sun is conjunct a dwarf planet called Varuna at seven degrees of Leo. And Varuna in myth is linked to the Vedic god of waters. So it could be interesting in terms of any extreme earth events, what, what comes up about water at this time. She's also linked to sacred law and she's the enforcer of cosmic law, enforcer of cosmic law. And it is remarkable. I mean, I very much respect the work of, of Kelly Hunter here, the research she's done, and also of Alan Clay, who runs the Dwarf Planet University, um, who, you know, is also very much describing these dwarf planets as a, as a higher octave of consciousness. But the ones that have been investigated so far are all about divine law, cosmic law, sacred law, natural law they are not ever about man-made law they they go way beyond that to something uh much more foundational in our world and i find that fascinating so uh, you know they have their their moral compass in in the right place as it were and that to me the sun conjunct shining a very bright light on truth aquarius and on this sense of, of sacred law and cosmic law and enforcer of cosmic law. And that, that's kind of linked to the dwarf planet Orcus, which is exact by degree conjunct, exactly by degree conjunct Mars. So Mars is energizing Orcus. Remember, these dwarf planets all have around about a, a 300 year orbit. Orcus is linked to the Etruscan god of the underworld who punishes oath breakers, those who violated sacred and divine law, and takes them down to the underworld for pretty grim punishments to make them to make them see the light. So again, we have this, this breaking of, of sacred law, divine law, and, and some kind of um, rec recognition, if not retribution of that, um, to get us back on track with, um, with what I've referred to in the past as, as, as porno, P-O-N-O, -O, but it's pronounced porno, right relationship with the earth, right relationship with nature, the right balance with nature, which is really what Homer in Libra balance is also, is also talking about. Now, Mars here, um, just to dwell on Mars here, being conjunct August, it's energizing August, as I say, in Virgo, it's extremely good at a personal level. If you want any, um, if you're going through any projects which need detail, detailed and painstaking work to get every every fact right, get it, you know, everything exact, dot the I's, cross the T's, get everything in its right place, logically everything running like clockwork. Mars is extremely good at doing that. It's very, very good. Um, Virgo is one of the, the key signs linked to medicine. And Mars here is exactly by degree trying to Jupiter. So this is bringing in this sense of um, fighting for our beliefs, fighting for, again, the truth, Jupiter. Jupiter rules Sagittarius, linked to truth and the law. Um, fighting for what is really correct, Virgo probably linked to health and medicine in some way so this is this is this is very powerful this is a crusading element that we're we're willing to go out on a limb to fight for um to fight for our beliefs now there's something very beautiful here at this full supermoon 
we have Venus, 26 of Leo, again, love and heart. And it's actually in a grand fire trine. It's an equilateral triangle um, to the North Node, 28 of Aries, the galactic center, 27 of Sagittarius, and it also actually connects to Varda, dwarf planet Varda I'll talk about in a moment at 25 of Sagittarius, which is going to stay conjunct that galactic center for quite some time. Remember, very slow orbits, and the galactic center kind of stays where it is. So although this looks slightly squiffy, it is an equilateral triangle, and grand trines in far are quite visionary. They're very inspiring. They very much look to the future as well. And this is really talking about the energy from the galactic center, which is um, this electromagnetically charged plasma with which we, it's the raw information, the raw energy with which we create our world has to be done with love, the heart, but also anchored in our sense of inner authority, center, power, and sovereignty. This is really clear. Varda in myth, again, you may remember, with her husband, uh, Manwe, Tolkien write, writes about them in his book, Cimmerillion. Varda and Manwe um, in myth were said to create the original universe, the original cosmos. And Varda's role in that was to um, take the, the, the role um, or take the position of the sun and moon and the stars, place them in the heavens and set them on their course. So she, together with, with Manwe, and of course Manwe has been in some very strong aspects around early in the year, around about Capricorn solstice, of originally creating our world. And it's in a very strong position here, Varda, to the galactic center. It's connecting to the raw material, the raw energy with which we are creating our world. And so this gives, again, confidence about this sense of rebirth, this sense of a whole new world being born, whole new earth being born for us. And I've talked a lot about the kind of so many plants being the end of one sign and the beginning of another. That's been a running theme um, in the last in the last few months. Um, another aspect of of um, of note here to talk about is that um, Saturn is opposing Mercury. And particularly because Mercury is in Virgo, one of its own signs, this can, in a very positive sense, uh, personally help us with very focused concentration. Saturn will narrow the mind down to very specific objectives, specific tasks. And this can really help with concentration and working through the detail. In a, in a less positive sense, this can be a greater attempt at control over our communication. Um, going forwards, and I think we've seen quite a bit of that already. So um, that could well be the, the case again here. I think that will be generally ongoing. Another aspect to mention, and this was really running all the way through July, is that uh, Uranus is still square to Venus. Now, any square to Venus, any uh, aspect to Venus, if Venus is moving through your fifth or seventh houses of relationship, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can download a free birth chart from my website, go to the link below, get a two-part video series that will take you from zero to help you understand where these points fall in your chart and um, what every update means for you in terms of your chart and the meaning for you. Um, this can either make you feel if you're in a relationship restless, that you want more freedom and independence, or that um, if you're not in a relationship, it can suddenly bring one in from out of the blue with somebody younger, foreign, very different background to you. You can have that out of the blue um, experience. Hard aspects between um, Uranus and Venus are always potentially linked to financial volatility. Of course, we have a lot of change in our global economy linked to the BRICS um, countries getting together and growing. Uh, quite rapidly in the number of countries that they're um, incorporating. And I, I think that is a very high percentage of the population now, which ultimately has to tip the apple cart in terms of the strength of various currencies, including the US dollar. So that will 
continue to run for a little while. And I think round about the eclipses, September, October, particularly the October eclipse end of uh, October on the 28th at five of Taurus, back in a financial sign there, that could be um, interesting to see what unfolds there. Jupiter and Uranus are too wide apart to be considered conjunct here, although they are co-present in Taurus. But they are going to come together in a beautiful, very uplifting conjunction in April 2024. And this is really to do with another big surge of awakening, another big rise in our consciousness collectively, could well be um, also linked to galactic connection or galactic news of some kind greater sense of we are remembering our galactic citizenry jupiter is actually square to this sun and moon square to the moon at nine sun at nine it's not a super tight square but nevertheless it's square and jupiter in taurus well first of all it can make whatever happens at this full super moon much bigger and much more dramatic in whatever is unfolding, but it's also reminding us to kind of leave behind the complexity of the technology and the intellect of Aquarius and come back to the earth, back to nature, Taurus, getting back into the, the natural rhythms of the earth, planting by the rhythms of the moon, food growing, you know, very fundamental. It's those basic survival needs that may well be highlighted at this time, which could be in a very, very positive way. Uranus here, although it's wide, is still operationally in trine to Pluto. Now, this, these, this trine will become exact five times from 2026 to 2028. And when historically these outer planets, because they both move very slowly, Uranus 84 year cycle, Pluto 248 year cycle. So these are quite rare to come together in a trine. Historically, when we've experienced trines with these planets, there has been um, a great deal of creative innovation, a blossoming of civilization, which is incredibly positive. And so if we're looking down the timeline when these five exact trines are happening between 2026 and 2028, I think that is going to be um, an extraordinarily positive time. That's what I'm seeing, particularly the early months of uh, 2026. Not only do we have those trines beginning, but we've also, with those planets, got very positive aspects to Saturn and to Neptune that have a positive aspect between themselves as well so you know very interesting um times if we look further down the timeline i think 2024 is going to continue the demolition and we will be feeling as pluto keeps transiting between end of capricorn beginning of aquarius this sense of um really radical shifts from whatever we've known as foundational and structural in our past to something that uh, we are only just beginning to birth. So it can feel a little bit rocky at times, but we we must move forward. You know, Capricorn, uh, sorry, Pluto isn't going to track back all the way into Capricorn and resurrect those structures. Its purpose is to demolish them if they are revealed not to be of the highest integrity and transparency. That's its process. So just know that this is, it has an evolutionary process for humanity. Um, so this is, as I say, a, a very, very powerful full supermoon. And I'm going to stop sharing here. But I, I really would like you to remember this sense of the split between the head and the heart, and really increasingly, you know, we've we've lived all of our lives in our minds. Essentially, we've been encouraged to live in our minds. You no, know, with with smartphones, computers, everything's about the mind. Everything's about information. We've developed generally a very short attention span with that as well. Everything's about um, knowledge. But increasingly, we are being encouraged to drop into the heart. And this will really take us back to ancient rememberings, I feel. Um, some people believe that the heart is where the Akashic records are, Akashic records um, 
are held as well where, as I've mentioned before, our ener the energetic imprint of our birth chart resides and what connects us to the cosmos is, is the heart. And so this is the heart as, as, a, as a state of being, love as a state of being. So try and move through your day, try and catch yourself, leave post-it notes all over the house to remind yourself, you know, love is a state of being. What's my state of being? What am I thinking? Am I thinking? Am I in my mind or in my heart? And develop this much greater sense of I am standing in my power, not in an assertive way, not in an aggressive way. It's just this is where I'm at. And everything emanates from my state of being. And I, I absolutely 100% believe that. Everything emanates from your state of being. And that really is determining your day-to-day -day reality. But collectively, this is how we can, we can change things quickly, I believe, much more quickly in operating energetically. I know these are immensely tough times for people. Nobody is escaping those tough times, you know, one way or another, we have all experienced many great challenges in um, particularly the last three years. But um, I am no stranger to, to very, very tough times over extended periods, believe me. So don't think that um, in these videos I'm, I've been living in la la land because that would not be correct. So that that's where I think our strength comes. That's where our wisdom comes, having triumphed, you know, keep the facts the same. If you go back over your life and it's been <clears throat> it's been hard, keep the facts the same, but don't think of yourself as the victim of those. Think of yourself as the the survivor who has triumphed, you know, that happened, that happened, that happened. It was incredibly tough. It's a miracle. I'm still on this earth and I have triumphed. I'm an incredible survivor. I've learned a great deal of strength and self sufficiency, say to yourself. And that puts me in very good stead for future challenges that come my way. Because every time I'm challenged, I win. Because I'm still here. Every time I'm challenged, I win because I'm still on this earth. So turn it around, keep the facts of whatever happened the same, but change the meaning. If you change the meaning, you change your life because you change your state of being and that changes everything. I hope that's helped you. Intensely um, strong times, we know it, because this evolutionary period is so unique and because it's happening so fast. In a few short years, we are going to be in a very different place to where we are now. A much better place, I believe, particularly if you take the high road. If you take the low road, it'll take longer, still get there, but we can, we can be on fast track at the airport if we choose. God bless, hope that's helped you. Um, and see you again very soon. I'm going to be talking to uh, Heather Ensworth in the next couple of days, which is always an absolute joy. And uh, Veda Austin right at the end of the month. Bye for now. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.